Deontay and Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, Deontay. What's going on, Darren? You doing okay? I'm doing okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this. So you have your fight next week. Uh, Anthony Joshua is going to defend his titles on June 1st, and then a couple weeks after that, Tyson Fury is back in the ring uh, in Las Vegas on June 15th. And so you're not fighting each other at the moment in terms of the three guys getting together. But I wonder, in your mind, is there any kind of competition within you to want to show the boxing public or the, the fans that, you know what, we're all fighting within a 30-day period roughly, and uh, you want to be the one that shows the best performance of those three to sort of let people continue to gauge you against each other? You know, I, I haven't even thought about that, Dan. Um, no way I think about it after this conversation because I know what I possess. I know who I am, and as you can see, I'm the most exciting out of all, all two of those guys. These guys don't bring the excitement like I bring, and Tyson Fury is the most boring one of all of, of us, too. You know, so I think I just continue to do what I do and, and do what I do best, and that's not these guys out silly. You know, I'm not in competition with none of them. You know, uh, they're great guys, they're great fighters themselves, and I, I, I expect them to be their sales. Don't, don't add no pressure onto it. Do what y'all guys do, and Deontay Wilder's is going to do what he do. So now before you uh, talk to me about this, you in your previous uh, comments, you mentioned about taking control of your career. And I know that you have a, a worthy a challenger, mandatory to take care of next week. Uh, but you know that everybody would like to see you in a rematch with Fury, you against Joshua. You know, Joshua maybe against uh, against uh, Fury, given you know they're both from England. So what do you say to the fans who say, you know what, you have a good fight coming up with Brazil, but we want to see all you three fight each other, you and the rematch and those other guys. How do you how do you yeah. explain to the public why those fights are not happening at the moment? I mean, well, it's, it's, it's simple. You know, if they take the time and take a deep breath and sit back and reflect on the past and what has happened, and I know we're in the, we're in the present right now and the future is bright as well, too. But if you look back in the past and sit back and see what Deontay has already have tried to do, him and his team has tried to do, let's start out with Fury first. With Fury, since Fury felt like, no, nah, it was, you know, everyone got the, that, that, everyone got that perspective of him beating me uh, uh, t uh, 12 out of 10 rounds from ESP, um, from, from, from Showtime with Steve Forhood cars and, and, and the comment commentaries coming, being on Fury's side the whole way through, you know, and I worked with these guys and they, they, you know, beating him up more than I. So when you get new people come in, they don't know what they're looking at. They don't know what's going on. So they're going to look for the so-called experts of the sport and listen to them. So, Let's let's fall from there. They carry away with that. So if you carry, if if, if if I'm a fighter, and I'm thinking, hey, I beat his ass, you know, t uh, twelve out of ten rounds. You know, my first reaction is I want an immediate reaction. If I feel like I got done wrong, you want an immediate reaction because you know you want an immediate rematch because you know the second rematch, man. If I if I if I beat them that wide of a margin, then shit, the rematch ain't nothing. That's going to be simple. It's going to be easy. So what we did, I said, hey, no, nah, no, nah, you didn't. I whooped your ass. I was the more aggressive. I didn't want to Hey, what's, what was, what, you know, what was the, what was the main highlight of the fight the whole night? I think we all can answer that. The spirit getting knocked on his ass and getting backed up. That was the whole highlight of the whole fight. So in that saying, I'm like, hey, I won. So I want a rematch. I want to, as a champion that are moving forward, I want to give you this rematch. I want to bless you. So what did he do? So if you a guy that knows that you're beating me with a wide margin, you immediately take that rematch. You don't run and get other fighters or get two enough to you immediately take that. Fury know I gave him a concussion. He didn't when you get a man that don't understand how he got on the ground nor how he got up, his brain has been shook. He don't want that fight no more. He don't want to get in no more. This is this is the common sense of a fighter. But as, as a fighter we must we must we must you know, promote ourselves. We must carry this type of, you know, this ego of like, I'm the man and I did this and that because we don't want people to look up on us as punks or somebody that's scared. Or whether you're a fighter, you're not supposed to be scared. But we're human beings as well, too. So deep down inside, he knows the real reason. That's why he's fighting another guy. That's why he had the contract in his, in his face for five days to a week and then sign it. And when Showtime came, when ESPN came along and all them, yeah, it sounded good because they knew I was in the back of that. They knew the rematch was coming. They wanted me on, on in the back of that, you know. So 
that right there already killed his theory of, 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 of trying to fight. He didn't want that fight. Oh, it would have been happy. I wouldn't have had to fight my Minotaur. I would have went straight to Fury and then got my then got that fly out of the way in Brazil. With Joshua, <laughs> four months. <laughs> hey, four Joshua, months. I'm going to try to be brief on Joshua, okay, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. It's easy. It's easy. Four months. We tried. You know, four different occasions, maybe five different occasions. Twelve. 12.5, 15 flat feet. He said he want, I want 50, 50. We gave that to him. Wait, no, my, 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 my country deserves uh, me to fight here, so I'm gonna fight here. So he didn't want to fight. Then the zone thought they were gonna step in and make the fight. Then they had to come back and apologize because they wasn't prepared for us. That's what four or five times we tried to make the fight. Now they crying because they don't have nowhere to go. Man, hey, the fans, go back and study it. Go back and look and see who really is the king of the division, who really tried to make these fights. And when you come back, you'll find yourself being a better place, and you'll, be, you'll come with peace with yourself. Thank you. All right, I got one other question. I'm going to change gears a little bit. Uh, and the, the fine uh, PR people have actually sent this out, and uh, I found it to be very interesting. Uh, the fight that you're going to have against Brazil is going to be your ninth title defense. You're starting to sort of edge into historical names on the list of heavyweights that have made that many defenses if you're successful against Brazil. And I'll say that it will be nine defenses, how many Muhammad Ali made the first time he was champion. It's the number of title defenses that Mike Tyson made in his first famous uh, title reign. And it's the number of title defenses that Lennox Lewis made in his second championship reign, which was obviously when he was at his very best. What does it mean to, what would it mean to you to, to sort of put yourself in that list of guys to get to the ninth title defense in the heavyweight division? I mean, it means a lot. It means a, it means a great deal to me. It's, it means a lot of accomplishment. You know, it means that I've proved so many people wrong and still to this day, they're proving people wrong. So, you know, you know, it's going to be a great accomplishment, not only just to pass so many great fighters that they came before me, but to continue to go uh, go further and to, to be the number one guy, to, to, to be a hard act to follow. I still got a long way to go to what I want to do in this sport. And uh, I will accomplish everything I set forward to doing. I'm an amazing fighter, I'm an amazing talent, and i got an amazing team behind me. And with that combination, man, sky's the limit. All right, very good, Deontay. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you on the 18th. All right, baby, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'll get a couple more for you, Deontay, and then we'll wrap it up. Go yeah. ahead, operator. Our next, our next question is going to come from Carlos Toro from Fightful News. Please go ahead. Hi, Deontay. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. Um, you know, much has been said between the two of you and the build-up to this fight between you and Dominic Brazil. Do you feel like this fight is a little more personal to you than maybe some of your past fights? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> oh, man, and that's not a laugh for George. That's an evil laugh like right that. You know, in an uh, evil scene, the, the evil man got a laugh. <laughs> that's my evil laugh. Uh, I think the most the, the, the most exciting I've been and want to hurt a man so bad was back in 2015 with Burn Mr. Vern, and we all know what happened to him. And, and the second time was just play around with him, you know. So, you know, with this one right here, behind the story that comes behind it, people got to understand when you're dealing with Deontay Wilder, every, you know, I, I'm passionate about what I say, I'm passionate about what I do, and what Dominique Brazil and how he displayed himself – on that, on that night, because I put him on my, my car. He, he didn't have to be on my car. But you come to my own time and cause this mess, and, and you, like I said before, you want to start this drama and act like you was the victim and your wife was the victim. And, you know, I guarantee you right now, they, they don't even know what their kids were during that in time. But I can tell you where they were. They was with my brother. They was guarding them as if those kids were mine. You know, and I don't like it. I'm a man. I can accept my faults. I can, I can, I can accept my wrongdoings. But when you get a guy like him, like I said, he's a guy that'll come in your business and waste water, or waste ice, and, and then slip on it and purposely and try to sue you for money. He's an opportunist, and I don't like that. So I need this boost as a champion of the division. I need this boost because, like I said, I never thought about investing in myself the way I've done. You know, to to be a champion and get away with so many different things, man, it's, it's been crazy. But now. I've turned every stone over, man. This is the most exciting camp that I've ever had, you know, in my entire life. I feel it tops all camps, and I needed this reignition in my life. I needed this extra boost 
because I will do what I say I'm going to do in that ring tonight. I'm um, a damn that's right. <laughs> damn it, tell you that. You know, I know you wanted the rematch against Tyson Fury after you guys fought to a draw, and I think I speak for a lot of people in the boxing community in saying that they wanted to see that fight, or at least were expecting to see that fight next for the both of you. Was it frustrating to, for you to kind of have to reset yourself and now think about preparing for other opponents that are going to be wanting to fight you, starting with Dominic Brasil, now that it's looking like a Tyson Fury rematch is going to have to wait quite some time if it will ever come? Right. No, no, it wasn't it wasn't hard for me. You know, I, I mean, you got to look at what I've been through. You know, like I said, I keep talking about the past. You know, you got to see what I've been through with different guys disappointing me, you know, failing drug tests, making me lose out on a lot of money and stuff like that. So I understand the business of boxing. And I know that if you have something in place one minute, the next minute it could be gone just like that. You know what I mean? And once you go through this cycle and you go through it over and over again, you try to get the understanding, a better understanding of boxing and, and what what's to come. You know, nothing is guaranteed until to, to that bell ring and, and that guy throws the first blow. And as we can see, even when the bell rings, it ain't certain until that first blow is thrown because we got guys that'll get out the damn ring, time the bell ring. You know what I mean? So things like that have prepared me. And I understand as a fighter, you know, because I try to play two different, you know, I, I understand as a fighter why he made that decision. I hurt Tyson Fury very badly. I gave him a concussion. Like I said, this man had memory loss, and that's that's not healthy. That's not healthy for you. And as a man, as a man with a family, hey, if you need a warm-up, a tune-up to see if your marble's back in place, go do that. Take as many warm-ups you need. We understand. He said he got three more fights, and then he's out of here. We all know why he's going to be out of here. Because that one of those fights leads up to me, <laughs> and, and and I'm gonna finish it. You know, I'm gonna finish the job. You know, so I understand it all. I'm not a guy that that, that can't understand things, even in everyday life. If someone going through something, I try to. My mind is like I said, it's so big, a spaceship is fitting. And so when you were describing something, you're telling me something. I try to take my mind in a virtual reality and put myself in your position, and I try to look at every aspect possible and try to go and understand. So I understand why he made that decision. I understand it all. And go get healthy because I want the best. I want the best spirit when that time comes, you know, just like I want with all these guys because I don't want no excuses. I don't want nobody saying this and that. I'm the only fighter that can come in with, with damaged arms and, and, and body not feeling well and still knock you out because I am blessed. My grandma said I was anointed by God <laughs> and what she was so right. Thanks, Deontay. Best of luck on May 18th. My man, thank you so much. Bless you. Our last question is going to come from John Cudney from um, Reddit Boxing. Please go ahead. To this day. Oh, hi, Deontay. So this is a question about you betting on yourself in the decisions you've made in your career. You were, you know, there were discussions of a Joshua fight last year. A lot of people on the Internet criticized you for not taking their offer unconditionally. You know, it didn't come together. Now a year later, the zone offered you a significantly bigger deal, so suddenly you look pretty smart for turning down that deal at the time. Now you turn that deal down uh, again. So just just wondering if you can talk about this topic of you know betting on yourself and what uh, you know the plan is on your career to, to maximize the value you can get out of your career. Yes, most definitely. Like I said, I, if anybody's going to dictate my career, it's going to be myself. You know, I understand how it is to have a promoter and what comes in the contract of, of having a promoter. But when you get to a certain point and you know you're the talent, you don't want to put a feel in the, 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 the people in the seats and they come to see your talent, you know, and if you have the opportunity, why not take a chance on yourself? You know, why not bet on yourself? And I have a smart team that, that educate me and guide me through, no matter what people say, you know, about certain people, you know. If, I have a wonderful team, man. I, you know, me and Shell and Jay and, 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 you know, we started with them. We always say we're going to start, we started together, we're going to end together. And we, when we brought Al along, that even more made my team strong. So who I'm with now is who I'm going to end with. And they're guiding me all the way through. They're going to make sure that not only do I go in history, but they go in history as well as a team. And, and it's a blessing feeling to have such a strong team in a business that's so dirty, you know. And, and that's why we said we're betting on myself. I have everything established and set for myself, my own promotion. And uh, we're looking forward to do great things. Not only, you know, not only after I retire and get away from the sport, but things we're going to stay alive with the promotion. We look, we're very serious in promotion.
promotion. I know a lot of guys say, oh, I got a promotion company. All that. You know, that sounds good, but what do you really want to do with it? And I'm in it for the long run. You know, I think I have the, the talent and ability to display myself in, in, in a way that people it can bring excitement, as I've already done. But the next step is to come, and outside of the ring, I think I'm going to be able to promote fighters and be able to talk about them and not about myself, you know, and be able to really promote fighters and bring the next Deontay Wilder or the next whoever they want to be. I always tell, you know, just like I tell my brother, I don't want you to be just like me. I want you to be better than me. I'm a type of person that, that even if you do better than me, I'm happy for you. And a lot of people is not like that because some people, if you get equal to them or higher than them, they get, they, that's when the jealousy and envy come. I'm not that type of person. My heart is, is of gold. I'm a provider, I'm a protector, and I love to see people do great, even if it's better than I. Oh, thank you so much, Deontay. Um, just quickly, if there's still a bit of time, um, Shelly, uh, think what you're on the call. I'm curious to hear you address the same question of uh, Deontay Wilder betting on himself to uh, maximize his uh, value in his career. Um, Look, he is willing to take the risk both in taking low money, and he offered it for um, Joshua. He's willing to walk away. One of the most powerful words in the world is no. And he is strong enough to say no and believe in himself that whatever he said no to now will be worth a lot more later. And so far, that has proven true, and I don't see any reason it won't be going forward. Um, he's a very, very strong human, not physically, but mentally. And when you're with him, you're with him, and he's with you, there's nothing better. People have tried to break us up. His strength of who he is is he knows who was there for him, whether it be Jay or Al or myself, and that's who he sticks with. And, um, you know, I'm just very proud of him and proud to be part of his team. Okay. On that note, I think that was the last question. And what I'd like to do is ask uh, Deontay if he has final thoughts uh, before we hang up. And look forward to seeing you next week in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, for Fight Week. Deontay, last Almost thoughts? definitely. Um, just thank everyone that's came on the phone, everyone that's listening and tuning in. May 18th is the time, you know, uh, I thank everyone for being patient with this this little thing that we got going on in the heavyweight division. Just look at it and consider that the excitement is back in the heavyweight division. The fire is lit. And, you know, it's like I, I'm more excited than I've ever been in my career because of everything that's going on with it. So I ask people just to be patient and what comes patient comes time and we got to be able to even both out patience and time, but they all work together. You're going to get the, the, the main fights that you guys want to see. The great thing about it is that we're all still in discussion. You know, I can understand if it was a closed door on certain teams and we're not having no discussion with nobody. Then it'll be something that really will be a laid out, a thrown out thing. But everyone is still in the discussion and, and talking, and it's just going to take a little time. But I just, just tell people, you know, the, the fans of boxing, people that's coming in boxing, you know, everyone, just to have patience, the big fights are going to happen. And you know that when the big fights happen, you know that Deontay Wilder's involved in it. Because most of these guys, they live by the, they live by the motto of less, less risk with high rewards. But we've known that I took high risk with low rewards. And, that, you know, yeah, but we've gotten smarter. We've proven ourselves. And we 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 doing our own thing. Like I said, we're betting on ourselves. And when I bet on myself, you're going to get great response. You're going to get great shows out of me. And and I'm looking forward to May 18th. So I see you guys there. And I'm looking forward to you guys. And I also want to announce, announce my new clothing line. I got it coming out. That'll be sold, you know, online. I'm, look, you look out for that um, at bombsquad.com. We got a fiancewatch.com as well, too. We do. You know, we did everything up that way. You can wait, have your gear you know, ready for me too, and support me like none, none before, baby. So I'm ready to go. Let's do it, baby. And <laughs> All right. On that note, we are going to wrap this call up. And uh, Medio, you will be receiving your fight week schedule tomorrow, so stand by for that. And any questions, feel free to call. 
my company or Showtime or anybody else available on the PR team willing and ready to take your questions. Thanks so much, Deontay. See you in a couple days. All right, baby. Thank you so Bye. much. Y'all have a great one. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, this completes your conference call. You may all disconnect and have a great day.